During the driving test, your examiner is going to ask you two questions. One at the beginning of the test, this is known as a tell me question, and one during the test whilst you're on the move. This is known as a show me question. For the tell me question at the beginning of the test, you only actually have to explain your answer, although you may have to open the bonnet. And for the show me question during the drive, you'll have to actually do what the examiner asks you to do. Don't worry if you don't get the answer right first time, the examiners will give you a second chance. For example, if the examiner asks you to turn your rear fog light on, but you turn the full beams on instead, they will let you try again. I'm gonna try and make this as simple as possible by trying to keep the answers as short as possible. So, no more waffling, let's get on to the questions and answers. Tell me how you would check the brakes are working before starting a journey. Explain that the brakes should not feel spongy. If you don't know what a spongy pedal feels like, the clutch is a very good example of a spongy pedal. It just goes down to the floor. The brakes should feel firm. Test at the start of a journey when the car is slow and the car should not pull to one side when you are braking. Tell me how you'd know if there was a problem with your anti-lock braking system. Explain that the ABS light on the dash would stay illuminated permanently. Tell me how you would check the power assisted steering is working before starting a journey. Explain that if you try turning the wheel at the same time as starting the engine, the wheel should get noticeably easier to turn once the engine is on. Tell me where you'd find the information for the recommended tire pressures for this car and how tire pressures should be checked. Explain that your recommended tire pressures are in your owner's manual. Use a reliable pressure gauge Check when the tires are cold, so not after a long journey, not necessarily a cold day. Don't forget the spare wheel and remember to fit the valve caps. Tell me how you would check the tires to ensure that they have sufficient tread depth and that their general condition is safe to use on the road. The tires should have no cuts or bulges and the tread should be at least 1.6 millimeters deep across the middle three quarters of the width of the tire you need to check all the way round. It's also helpful to know that when the tire wears down to these tread wear indicators, which are 1.6 millimeters high, your tire is now illegal. There's normally a triangle or arrow on the side wall of the tire to help you find them. If you would like your own reliable pressure gauge and tire tread depth gauge, I've left a link in the description to these two items. This is actually an award-winning pressure gauge due to its price, build quality, and accuracy. In fact, it's so well built, I reckon I could use it to smash a window if ever I got trapped in my car, for whatever reason that may happen. This tread depth gauge is DVSA approved, so it can be used for MOTs. It's easy to use and it's cheap. Two essential tools to keep your tires safe for the road and will probably last forever or near enough. Tell me how you would check that the headlights and taillights are working. You don't need to exit the vehicle. To get the electrics to work, you will need to turn the ignition on. To do this, turn the key until these symbols light up on the dash. Avoid turning the key all the way as this would start the engine. Then you would turn the headlight switch to the dipped beam symbol and walk around the vehicle to make sure it's working. As this is a tell me question, you don't need to physically check the lights. Tell me how you would check the direction indicators are working. You don't need to exit the vehicle. Explain you would turn on the hazard lights and walk around the vehicle to check all six indicator lights are working. Again, as this is a tell me question, you don't need to physically check the lights. Tell me how you would check the brake lights are working on this car. Explain that you may have to turn the ignition on and operate the brake pedal. Make use of reflections behind you or get someone to get out and have a look. Tell me how you would switch on the rear fog lights and explain when you would use them you don't need to exit the vehicle. Turn the ignition on and then turn your headlights on to dipped beam. Then find this symbol, which is for your rear fog lights. On this car, you don't twist the switch to get to the fog lights as the symbol would mislead you to. Instead, you actually pull out the switch two clicks. The first click is for the front fog light and the second click is for the rear. The same symbol will then illuminate on the dashboard to remind you they're on. Then you will need to explain that you use the rear fog lights when visibility is less than 100 meters. Tell me how you would switch your headlights from dipped to main beam and explain how you would know the main beam is on. Turn the ignition on and turn the dipped beams on. This symbol is for main beam. 
On this car, you push the indicator stalk forward to turn it on, and you'll have a blue main beam light on the dash to remind you it's on. Pull the indicator stalk back to turn it off. I just want to quickly say that most cars have different ways of turning these lights on and off. Look at the owner's manual to find out how, but the symbols are always the same. Or at least, I think they're always the same as far as I'm aware. Tell me how to make sure your head restraint is correctly adjusted so it provides the best protection in the event of a crash. Not all head restraints are adjustable, but if yours is, you want the rigid part of the head restraint, which is normally the middle, to be in line with the tops of your ears, and it should be as close to your head as possible if you can adjust it in that direction. Open the bonnet and tell me how you would check that the engine has sufficient oil. To open the bonnet, you need to find and pull the bonnet release. If you don't know where it is, look at your owner's manual. This pops the bonnet partially open, but to open the bonnet fully, you'll need to move the safety latch. On this car, you squeeze this lever and lift the bonnet. Support the bonnet by putting the bonnet supporting stick thing in the designated hole. The dipstick is normally a bright color for easy identification. Explain that you will pull it out, clean off the oil, dip it back in, hence why it's called a dipstick, and pull it back out again to see if the oil is in between the top and bottom markers. Open the bonnet and tell me how you would check that the engine has sufficient engine coolant. This is a symbol for coolant. It's supposed to represent an old style thermometer. Make sure the coolant is in between the min and max markers. Open the bonnet and tell me how you would check that you have a safe level of hydraulic brake fluid. This is a symbol for brakes. Make sure the fluid is between the min and max markings again. If it's hard to see the fluid, shining a torch on it will help. They were all the tell me questions that you could get at the beginning of your test. You would only get one of those questions though. These questions coming up are the show me questions that you get during the drive. When it's safe to do so, can you show me how to wash and clean the rear windscreen? The square window symbol is the rear window on every car I've used. So on this car, push the windscreen wiper stalk forwards and watch your window get cleaned. Pull it back a click to turn off the wiper. When it's safe to do so, can you show me how you wash and clean the front windscreen? The curved window symbol is for the front window. So on this car, pull the windscreen wiper stalk towards you and ta-da! When it's safe to do so, can you show me how you'd switch on your dipped headlights? This symbol here is for dipped headlights, so twist to the symbol. Don't be confused that the dip headlight symbol does not illuminate, but the side light symbol does. This is a normal motoring quirk. I have no idea why manufacturers do this, but it does confuse my customers. When it's safe to do so, can you show me how you'd set the rear demister? Again, square window symbol is for the rear. So press the button with this symbol and these little heat elements in the window will heat up and get rid of the condensation. When it's safe to do so, can you show me how you would demist the front windscreen? The curved window symbol is for the front. On this car, you press this button to activate it, but on basic cars, you have a knob you need to twist to get to the symbol, and then you'll have to turn the fan speed up to maximum. Turning the aircon on with hot air will help it clear faster as air conditioning dries the air and heat helps the condensation evaporate. When it's safe to do so, can you show me how you would operate the horn? This is the horn symbol. Most will be on the airbag. Press for noise. When it is safe to do so, can you show me how you would open and close the side window? Um, I'm sure you know how to do that, so I'll leave that one down to you. If you get one of these questions wrong, you will get a driver fault. But if you get both of the questions wrong, you still only get one driver fault, also known as a minor. So it doesn't matter if you get both the questions wrong, you still only get one driver fault. However, try not to get these faults because they do add up. And if you get enough, you will fail the test. I recommend you come back to this video just before your driving test, just to refresh your memory of these answers. If you're practicing without an instructor, make sure you have insurance. Get £20 off via the link in the description to Collingwood who provides specialist learning insurance that allows you to practice in a friend or family member's car without risking their no claims bonus. If you want to insure your own car, click on the link to confuse.com. I have found that they have the widest selection of cheap insurers for young drivers. But that's all for this one. Like if you think I did a good job and subscribe if you want to get my future videos.